بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سنبدا ان شاء الله بعرض المحاضره السادسه من ماده التبريد المخصصه لطلاب الساعات المعتمده سي اتش بي ستودنتس كورس نمبر اي دبل ام 401 تشمل هذه المحاضره بعض الاهداف وهي المقارنه ما بين المين كومبوننتس and the auxiliary components of vapor compression cycles and then we will review the ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle and we will show some solved problems then we will study the actual vapor compression refrigeration cycle and some solved problems then we will evaluate the performance of vapor compression refrigeration with liquid suction heat exchanger and a solved problem based on R7444 which is CO2 will be explained in details. Methods of refrigeration. The methods of refrigeration can be classified as a non-cyclic, cyclic and thermoelectrical. The non-cyclic refrigeration cooling is accomplished by melting ice or by supplying dry ice, which which is mean frozen carbon dioxide, which can be used for small-scale refrigeration in laboratories and workshops or portable coolers. Cyclic refrigeration consists of a refrigeration cycle where heat is removed from a low temperature space or source and rejected to high temperature sink with the help of external work using compressors. Cyclic refrigeration can be classified as a vapor compression or gas cycle. Vapor cycle refrigeration can further be classified as vapor compression refrigeration and vapor absorption refrigeration. Types of refrigeration cycles. There are three types of refrigeration cycles. One, vapor compression cycle. One, one, simple vapor compression cycle, which have discussed before, and some solved problems based on this simple vapor compression cycle will be discussed during these lectures. One, section one, two discussed innovative vapor compression cycle it can be classified into five sections we will discuss through this lecture the first section which is dedicated for vapor compression with liquid suction heat exchanger in next lectures we will discuss the four main items section 122 of cascade vapor compression cycle section 123 multi-stage vapor compression cycle with flash intercooler section 124 multi-evaporator vapor compression cycle even using one compression stage or multi-compression stage section 125 liquidification of gases which may be used in industry to liquidify the natural gas and transform it to LNG then to to facilitate the, its transportation during marines. The second part is a number two gas refrigeration, which is discussed in lecture number ten, and it's acting like a reversed Brighton cycle. Also, the third part is a vapor absorption cycle, will be discussed also in lecture number ten and in this system we will replace the compression using compressor by heat source such as hot water steam direct fired using different combustion materials or exhaust gases of diesel generators This slide presents the four main components of vapor compression refrigeration cycle, which is are the evaporator, the compressor, the condenser, 
and then the expansion device inside the evaporator we find that the low pressure liquid refrigerant in evaporator absorbs heat and changes to gas then the compressor increase the pressure of the refrigerant from evaporating pressure to condensation pressure using the work absorbed from the surrounding in a manner of electrical power the superheated vapor enters the compressor where its pressure is raised then the condenser receives these superheated gases to desuperheated it in the first stage of condenser and then complete its condensation until reach to the saturation liquid line as shown on pH diagram and will be discussed in next slides. The high pressure superheated gas is cooled in several stages in the condenser. It may be classified into three stages such as desuperheating, condensation and subcooling at final stage of the condenser. After the refrigerant leaves the condenser, it must be in decrease its pressure again to complete its journey inside this refrigeration cycle from state 4 to state 1 when passing across an expansion device such as expansion valve or capillary tube in small size refrigeration machines liquid passes through expansion device which reduce its pressure and controls the flow into the evaporator so the expansion device is responsible to reduce the pressure against the compressor which increase the pressure and also the expansion device is responsible to control the flow inside this refrigeration cycle Vapor compression refrigeration key components of mechanical compression chillers. If one evaporator in air coolers, evaporator cools down the return air where the cold refrigerant flow inside the evaporator coil with fins. The refrigerant evaporates and it changes it into vapor as the heat is transferred from air to the refrigerant. However, in water chillers, chillers produce chilled water in the evaporator where the cold refrigerant flows over the evaporator tube bundle. The chiller water is then pumped via the chiller water distribution system to the building air handling units. The chilled water as a secondary refrigerant passes through the coils in the air handlers to remove heat from air used to condition space throughout the building. The warm water or returned water transferred from the building ventilation air returns to the evaporator and the cycle starts over. 2. The compressor. Vaporized refrigerant leaves the evaporator and the troubles to the compressor where it's mechanically compressed and change it into high pressure and high temperature vapor in superheated zone as will be shown in P on pH diagram Th the, this temperature may be named the discharge temperature and it, it is observed the maximum temperature in this cycle upon leaving the compressor the refrigerant then enters the condenser side of the chiller or the refrigeration machine 3. Condenser Inside the air-cooled condenser, the hot refrigerant flows inside the tubes and the cooling air from atmosphere flows over these coils with, with fans from outside to desuperheating and then condensing the refrigerant to liquid phase inside the condenser before entering the expansion device or valve. However, inside the water-cooled condenser, the hot refrigerant flows around the tubes containing the condenser loop water. The heat transfers to the water, causing the refrigerant to condense into liquid form. The condenser water is pumped from the condenser bundle to the cooling tower, where heat is transferred from the water to the atmosphere. The liquid refrigerant then travels to the expansion valve to reduce its pressure and complete its journey again inside this 
the refrigeration cycle. Four, expansion valve. The refrigerant flows into the evaporator through the expansion valve or melting or metering device such as capillary tube. This valve controls the rate of cooling. Once through the valve, the refrigerant expands to lower pressure and a much lower temperature to complete its cycle and to enter the evaporator. It flows around the evaporator tubes absorbing the heat of chilled water that's been returned from the air handlers completing the refrigeration cycle. This slide presents all the components, consists of the forming components and the special components which may be required to complete the vapor compression function. The forming components listed here from number 1 to number 4, evaporator, compressor, condenser and expansion valve have been discussed in previous slides. Now we will discuss the function of the auxiliary components or special components which may, may must be included inside actual vapor compression cycle to complete its work correctly. Its number listed here in this slide starting from number 5 to number 16. Number 5, oil separator, which is installed on the discharge side of the compressor to separate oil, then the, refriger the refrigerant discharges from the compressor and return oil back to the compressor crankcase. Number 6, headmaster, which is connected to balance the mass flow rate going through the condenser in different part load conditions and acting as a bypass device connected in parallel with the condenser pipes. The 7. Liquid receiver. The liquid receiver must be connected on the cycle downstream the condenser to collect the, the liquid of the refrigerant going through outside the condenser and re-suction it in liquid case in liquid phase to support them to the evaporator before going through expansion device filter dryer number eight may be installed with a side glass number nine downstream the liquid receiver as shown then we can use a liquid suction heat exchange to exchange heat by supercooling the liquid of the refrigerant going outside the condenser by the, the gas which going out from the evaporator before entering the compressor. This heat exchange may be helpful to increase the COP with some refrigerant. The study must be performed to study the effect on the COP due to the superheating for the evaporator of the gas which going out through the evaporator before enter the compressor with the subcooling which will, must be happen to the liquid of the refrigerant going out from the condenser. This effect of liquid suction heat exchange will be discussed and shown on pH diagram in next slides and also a solved problem will be explain the effect on the liquid suction heat exchanger on the value of the COP in different cycles. Number 12 and number 13 EPR valve and CPR valve is the evaporator regulation pressure which regulates the pressure of the evaporator to ensure the performance of the compressor. However, the crankcase pressure regulator valve are also to be connected but near the compressor outside the cycle to control the pressure of the crankcase pressure based on the compressor performance to protect the compressor from uh, falling down or working out its design range and to save its lifetime. 
number 14 suction filter it's recommended to install a suction filter to remove any foliage materials which may be going through the cycle to be entered the compressor with the refrigerant such as dust or any particles of uh, materials during to welding uh, and other uh, like number 15 suction accumulator is recommended also to install to be installed in a suction line to ensure that the amount of liquid of the amount vapor of the refrigerant is sufficient in the suction side of the compressor to ensure to ensure the amount of refrigerant to be entered the compressor is correct number 16 pressure reducing valve which is connected on the discharge line on the compressor to ensure that the pressure does not exceed the specified pressure of the condenser and the other system component of this cycle to prevent it, it from explosion. It should be clear that the liquid line, the suction line and discharge line are col colored here with different colors. The liquid line which provides the liquid uh, from the condenser to the um, evaporator enter is shown in blue however the suction line which provides the vapor from uh, exit from evaporator to the suction of the compressor in yellow and finally the discharge line which connects the discharge of the compressor to the enter of the condenser is shown in red these colors are actually used in actual cycles to dedicate each line and its function based on this color code. Yellow for suction line, red for discharge, discharge lines, which is the maximum temperature and very hot. And you must not put your hand on this any part of this line. And finally, the liquid line, which is dedicated by blue. This slide shows a presentation of the vapor compression cycle on both TES diagrams and PV diagrams. It should be clear that the cycle are working between two main pressures. Low pressure in the evaporation which may be named evaporation pressure or evaporator pressure and high pressure side which is named condensation or con pressure of the condenser as can be shown on both TS diagram and PV diagram presented here in this slide uh, it should be clear that the terminal temperature difference should be kept between the evaporator and the cold space to be uh, cool refrigerated the refrigerant in the evaporator must be lower than refrigerated space temperature also the condenser temperature must be higher than the ambient temperature which at which will the heat be rejected from the condenser during the superheating condensation and subcooling to this temperature of outside temperature even using air or later on as we can use water for cooling in associated with cooling towers and cooling water circuits. This slide also presents the vapor compression cycle on TS2 on TS diagram and on PV diagram and finally the pH diagram on which we have switched the vapor compression from TS diagram and PV diagram to use this pH diagram as discussed before it has its presentation on pH diagram is very uh, accurate and more accurate than presentation on TS and PV diagram such the process of the forming components in the evaporation and compression condensation and expansion devices are shown on three lines straight lines on pH diagrams the process from 4 to 1 evaporation at constant temperature 
with a change of enthalpy then process from one to state number two compression inside the compressor even using isentropic efficiency 100% for isentropic compression or isentropic efficiency less than 100% and the S will be increased during this compression stage process the third process is from state 2 to state 3 inside the condenser start from the superheating from point 2 until reach the HG at condenser pressure on the vapor saturation line then starting to, to condensate the refrigerant inside the condenser until reaches points or state number three at the vapor liquid line which is equally with no state number four in the enthalpy and then the final process vertically presented from point three to point four by decreasing the pressure and the temperature using throttling inside expansion device which may be expansion valve or expand, uh, capillary tube using constant H process where H3 will equal H4. In isentropic compression, S1 will equal S2. Uh, in the evaporator, the pressure of 0.4 is equal to pressure of 0.1. Also, the, the condensation pressure equal to pressure of state 3 and state 2. However, the temperature of state 3 is corresponding to the temperature corresponding is equal to the corresponding temperature for the corresponding pressure, but the temperature of point 2 is the maximum temperature to be recorded in this cycle due to the discharge of the compressor as mentioned before and as will be seen on the solved problems to be discussed in this lecture. Here we will start to solve a number of problems based on the vapor compression cycle. Problem number one is based on refrigerant R12, which is works between minus 15 and 35 degrees Celsius uh, as evaporator and condenser temperature respectively. Uh, using pH diagram, you are required to estimate the COP then a mass flow rate of refrigerant per ton and C, number C, piston displacement per ton using volumetric efficiency 80% for the compressor, number D, heat rejected in the condenser per ton, number E, the ideal COP based on Carnot uh, cycle. In this slide, we can find the steps of the solution after presenting the cycle of pH diagram using the evaporating temperature and the condensing temperature to get the corresponding evaporating pressure and condensing pressure and presenting uh, the two lines of this pressure of the evaporating pressure which contains point number one and point number four in the evaporator inlet and the outlet and also point number two and point number three on the condenser pressure which is located on the condenser inlet and condenser outlet to get the COP after we have getting all the enthalpies from the pH diagram of R12 uh, as can be seen on this slide after getting these enthalpies H1 equal 345 kilojoule per kilogram h4 and h3 are equally and equal to 134 kilojoule per kilogram as shown on this map uh, on its uh, lower part then the enthalpy of point uh, state 2 is equal 375 kilojoule per kilogram using constant s line starting from state 1 and going parallel through the constant S lines on this pH diagram as presented before 
uh, and we can find also uh, we have getting all these enthalpies and finally we can we may need the specific volume of state one which will be used in the piston displacement equation uh, so we have getting the specific volume of state one which is equal 0 0.09 Firstly, the COP equal H1 minus H4 over H2 minus H1. And when will we use the numbers we have getting from the chart of the enthalpies, we can get that the COP equals 3.66. M dot refrigerant, the second required in number B, equals the cooling effect divided by specific cooling effect. The cooling effect here is used 210 in kilojoule per minute divided by the delta H which is equal 345 minus uh, 235 getting we can getting uh, we can get that uh, mass flow rate of the refrigerant equal 1.91 kilojoule per minute per ton Vapor uh, piston displacement uh, can be estimated using the equation piston displacement VP equal M dot refrigerant multiplying by specific volume of state 1 dividing by the volumetric efficiency which is have been stated equal to 0.8 then we can use the equation this equation to get 1.91 multiplying by 0.09 divided by 0.8 we can get that the volume the displacement volume of this compressor is equal 0.214 meter cube per minute per ton the total heat rejected in the condenser can be estimated by q equal q condenser equal m dot h2 minus h3 which is equal 1.91 multiplying by 375 minus 234 we can get that the Q rejected in the condenser equal to 270 kilojoule per minute per ton the ideal COP then can be estimated using the temperature in Kelvin uh, of the operating temperature T low divided by the temperature difference even per Kelvin or per degree Celsius uh, for this difference, we can get that the ideal COP is equal to 5.16. Problem number two. A vapor compression system using RC14A works between minus 10 degrees Celsius and 36 degrees Celsius as a evaporator and condenser temperature respectively using pH diagram to determine A. COP B. Mass flow rate of refrigerant per ton C. Piston displacement per ton using volumetric efficiency equal 83% D. Heat rejected in the condenser per ton E. Ideal COP We can observe that observe in this problem that the main uh, items are required similar to the previous problem and also I think the same pressures but we change the refrigerant to uh, get different values of COP and ideal COP and mass flow rate of refrigerant uh, per ton specific mass flow rate and piston displacement and heat rejected into condenser the white area is dedicated for your solution on printed version however the solution will be presented on the next slide after you have solved by yourself you can compare between two these parameters this is the solution after presentation or pH diagram using the same pressure and temperature using the temperature located on the evaporator and condenser similarly to the problem number one solve it using R12 but here we will use a chart of uh, refrigerant R134A we have get the COP I think it has been uh, increased compared 
with the previous problem, <coughs> which is equal, which uh, has been equal 3.66. Uh, if we uh, transform, if we replace the refrigerant, mm -hmm. we can get the COP is 4.66. Also, the mass flow rate of the refrigerant has been reduced from 1.9 to 1.5. The uh, volume, the piston displacement of the cylinder of the the displacement volume of the compressor VP equal M dot refrigerant multiplying by specific volume at state one divided by the volumetric efficiency of the compressor equal 1.5 by 0.1 divided by 30, 83.83, which is equal 1.18 meter cube per minute per ton. Then the Q rejected in the compressor QR or Q condenser equal M dot refrigerant multiplying by H2, the entering state of the uh, at the compressor outlet and condenser inlet minus H3, the outlet stage from the condenser, equal 1.5 multiplying by 422 minus 252, giving that Q rejected equal 255, 255 kilojoule per minute per ton. Ideal COP can also be estimated using the temperature in Kelvin of T low divided by the temperature difference between T high and T low equal minus 10 plus 273 divided by 36 minus minus 10 which is will be plus 10 giving the COP equal 5.7 which is higher than the COP of the previous cycle which have been 5.16 Problem 3 using R717, which is NH3. A simple NH3 vapor compression system has compressor with piston displacement of 2 m3 per minute, a condenser pressure of 12 bar and evaporator pressure of 2.5 bar. The liquid is subcooled to 20 degrees Celsius by subcooling the liquid line to suction line. The temperature of vapor leaving the compressor is 100 degrees Celsius. Heat rejected to compressor cooling water is 5000 kilojoule per hour. And volumetric efficiency of the compressor is 0.8. Compute capacity, indicated power, and COP of the system. The white area is dedicated for your solution, and the pressure enthalpy diagram of the used refrigerant ammonia R717 are presented here with the pressure and enthalpy axes. The pressure is shown using uh, bar units and the enthalpy using kilojoule per kilogram. The next slide will present the solution of this problem. The first step we have estimate the cooling effect using the equation refrigeration effect, total refrigeration effect, which is nomenclature here as Re equal M dot refrigerant multiplying by H1 minus H4. So firstly, we have to go to the chart to present all the cycle corners starting from point one, two, three, four to indicate all the enthalpies of the ammonia based on these working pressures which is highlighted and as inside the clouds shown on the above head of the problem of 12 bar for the condenser pressure and 2.5 bar these are the two main lines which will contain all the points of the cycle corners based on ammonia pH diagram then we can estimate the or using we can using the 
Displacement volume, VP equal M dot refrigerant multiplying by specific volume at state 1 divided by eta volumetric which have been given. So from this equation we can get the M dot refrigerant which is equal 3.2 kilogram per minute where the volumetric efficiency have been given at specific volume and the displacement volume or piston displacement is given in meter cube per minute of 2 meter cube per minute so we have get the mass flow rate of the refrigerant in the same unit kilojoule per minute if we can if we need to transform it to kilojoule per second we have to divide it to by 60 then we can get the cooling uh, effect QCC or Q cooling effect of refrigeration effect nomenclature here in this sol solution RE equals 3.2 which is uh, corresponding to the M dot refrigerant multiplying by H1 which have been getted from the chart 1445 minus 300 which is corresponds to H3 and H4 we can get that the RE equals 3664 kilojoule per minute then the capacity we can uh, estimate the capacity of this cycle based on the cooling effect by in ton in refrigeration ton by dividing or the transformation unit from kilojoule from kilojoule per minute per ton uh, two ton uh, refrigeration ton we have to divide by 210 so we can get the capacity as an equal 18 refrigeration ton then we will go to estimate the indicated power of the compressor which named here as a uh, uh, power listed below uh, firstly, we have estimate the work of the compressor of the displacement work performed uh, by the compressor, which is nomenclature in this solution WD, referred to displacement work. It have divided into two parts. Part is dedicated to compression process from H1 to H2 for certain amount of refrigerant so the first term will be m dot refrigerant multiplying by h2 minus h1 plus the term which have been lost during the cooling of this compressor as mentioned in the heading of this problem uh, that the compressor have rejected cooling uh, amount of heat using water is which is equal to 5000 kilojoule per hour will be used in the same equation but we will be divided by 60 to unify the units of these terminologies or these terms in this equation in kilojoule per minute then we can get the work displacement equal to 836 as can be seen by using the figures shown in kilojoule per minute then we can estimate the power, the indicated power, by transform the kilojoule per minute to kilojoule per second, which is corresponds to kilowatt, by dividing its results 835 divided by 60 to get 13 kilowatt, which is equal to the indicated power consumed by the compressor, and it was responsible to increase the pressure of the refrigerant from H1 to H2 for the certain amount of M dot refrigerant plus the term lost into the cooling water as mentioned in the heading of this problem. The final part is the coefficient of performance COP uh, which equal the cooling effect, the useful part of the cooling effect RE divided by the work displacement of this compressor including the cooling and the term responsible for increasing the pressure of the refrigerant used which is ammonia so 3664 divided by 836 will give that the COP equal 4.4 finally we have get all the three parts required of this problem
using the capacity and the power and the COP. The capacity is 18 the refrigeration ton and the power is 13 kilowatt. Therefore, the COP is 4.4, which indicates that the ammonia have high COP relative to another amounts, especially when using water cooling in the condenser, which reduce the condenser pressure to 12 bar rather than other cycles will be presented later on or solved in different kind of problems will with higher pressure starting from 18 or 20 or 24 bar so the effect of using cooling water is highlighted here also the effect of sub cooling degrees of the inside the condenser at its fi uh, final, sta final stages are increase the amount of cooling effect rather than the increasing uh, of the in the COP due to the reducing of the condenser pressure when using cooling water which which has effect to reduce the work of the compressor and reduce H2 if compared with air cooling systems problem number four a refrigeration system using an H3 works on standard vapor compression cycle. The condensing temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. Investigate the performance of the system based on A. COP B. Mass of refrigerant circulated C. Volume of refrigerant, of refrigerant handled D. Temperature of refrigerant at the compressor delivery so it need in item number d the discharge temperature which is the maximum temperature to be recorded inside this cycle the system operates at temperature in the evaporator of minus 10 degrees celsius and 16 degrees celsius respectively capacity of the system is 10 refrigeration ton use the properties of saturated nh3 which is ammonia as listed in the below table shown on this slide as can be seen firstly we have to plot the cycle corners using the two pressure listed or the two corresponding temperature listed of the condenser and uh, evaporator such as minus 10 degrees celsius for the evaporator temperature and 16 degrees Celsius for the condenser then after plotting we have get that point one uh, has in salty 1512.2 1740 in kilojoule per kilogram of ammonia you when using ammonia based on the attached uh, pH diagram of R717 and finally we have get from this chart that the H3 equal H4 and equal 340 the first step the COP can be estimated regardless to the mass flow rate of refrigerant using a specific change of enthalpy in the evaporator and specific change of enthalpy in the compressor so the COP equal H1 minus H4 divided by H2 minus H1 we can get that the COP equal 5 then we can estimate the M dot refrigerant using the cooling effect equation divided by specific cooling effect which is mean the delta H on the evaporator so the specific tonnage can be used 210 multiplying by 10 we're giving 2100 divided by delta h 1 minus h4 which is equal 1172 giving that um, m dot refrigerant equal 1.8 kilogram per minute or 0.03 kilogram per second if divided by 60 then the volumetric the specific volume the specific volume of state number one can be 
get its value from uh, clearly from this pH diagram at state number one, which have been shown wrongly on this presentation as shown number two uh, after the superheating due to the superheating performed inside uh, the evaporator to increase the load inside the evaporator and to delay the enter of the compressor from the saturation vapor line into the superheated the superheated vapor of the ammonia located at point at this point shown here which strongly uh, written as a two however it must be state number one how such uh, the correct number two is here the volumetric then the piston displacement of the compressor can be estimated uh, assuming that the volumetric efficiency of the compressor is 100 percent so the piston displacement uh, normally equal the specific volume at the enter of the compressor multiplying by the m dot refrigerant enters the compressor giving that 0.48 multiplying by 0 0.0 3 equal point oh 014 meter cube per second. Finally, from this chart, we can get the corresponding discharge temperature, which is the maximum temperature recorded or observed on this cycle on the discharge of the compressor, equal 125 degrees Celsius, as can be seen on this pH diagram attached to the solution. Problem number five, using R22, uh, R22 vapor compression system includes a liquid vapor heat exchange in the system. A system of a capacity 70 kilowatt operates between minus 8 degrees Celsius and 42 degrees Celsius respectively. Refrigerant is subcooled by 5 degrees Celsius showing the condenser and superheated by 10 degrees Celsius sure at the end of the evaporator before entering the compressor if four cylinder single acting reciprocating compressor with bore to stroke ratio 1 to 1.2 and operating at 1200 rpm is used you are requested to determine a ideal cop which is named Carnot COP, B, COP of this system, C, mass flow rate of the refrigerant, D, theoretical piston displacement per minute, E, the bore and the stroke of this compressor, assuming that the volumetric efficiency of the compressor is 80% and specific heat of the refrigerant equal 1.24 kJ per kilogram Kelvin, in liquid phase and specific heat of the vapor equal 0.74 kJ per kilogram Kelvin and also the refrigerant properties are given in the below table to use the specific volume and specific enthalpy and specific entropy in different units such as meter cube per kilogram for a specific volume kJ per kilogram for a specific enthalpy and kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin for specific entropy at the main temperatures dedicated in this evaporator and condenser at minus 8 degrees Celsius and 42 degrees Celsius respectively. The white area is dedicated for your solution and will be the, our solution will be presented in the next slide for this problem in different steps. Firstly, we have to plot the cycle corners as usual on this pH diagram dedicated for R22 by using the cycle corners and the two pressures and temperatures minus 8 and 42 we can locate the two main lines on which all the cycle corners will be plotted taking into consideration the 5 degree subcooled at the outlet of the condenser which must be taken here which is located here in point 3 state 3 and also the superheating which must be taken into consideration during plotting point A away from 
the vapor saturation line by 10 degrees Celsius of superheating as we plotted 0.3 away from the vapor saturation the liquid saturation line to the right side by 5 degree of supercooling and this 5 de 10 degree of superheating to the left side due to the increasing in the temperature at the suction of the compressor as mentioned in the heading of this problem uh, then we will go to estimate the requirements uh, of items A until item E. The first one is the ideal COP, which is equal capital T, capital T low, divided by capital T high minus T low from kernel 30, equal minus 8 plus 270, 273, divided by 42 minus minus 8 which is correspond to 42 plus 8 giving COP is equal 5.3 then we will go to item B to estimate the COP of this system as shown COP equal H1 minus H4 divided by H2 minus H1 from the enthalpies we have get from the pH diagram of R22 we can get that H1 equal 410, H2 equal 449, H3 equal H4 equal 244. So the COP of this system will equal 4.25, which is lower than the Carnot COP, which is listed in the above line, equal 5.3. <coughs> Then will we go to estimate the mass flow rate of the refrigerant and item C, M dot refrigerant will equal the cooling effect, the total cooling load in kilowatt divided by the cooling effect, the specific cooling effect inside the evaporator which is equal H1 minus H4, so M dot refrigerant equal 70 kilowatt divided by 410 minus 244 which is gives that M dot refrigerant equal 0.42 kilogram per second. Item number D, theoretical piston displacement per minute in meter cube per minute using the equation of uh, piston displacement which have been discussed through uh, many problems uh, previously. Uh, Piston displacement equal M dot refrigerant multiplying by specific volume of state 1 at entering the compressor divided by the volumetric efficiency which is given in this problem 80%. So the volumetric displacement or the volume flow rate in meter cube per second will be uh, equal 0.42 multiplying by point. 06 the specific volume divided by 0.8 the volumetric efficiency gives that the displacement volume equal 0 0.325 meter cube per second by multiplying it by 60 to transform it from meter cube per second to meter cube per minute we can get that the displacement volume or piston displacement is equal to meter cube per minute <clears throat> then item number uh, e which is need to estimate the bore and the stroke the diameter of each cylinder and the stroke uh, of this compressor from top dead center to bottom dead center of each cylinder the displacement volume can be estimated by the, the volume of each cylinder multiplying by the number of cylinder multiplying by the RPM. <clears throat> so the equation volume displacement equal by over 4 multiplying by d square which is corresponds to the area of the cylinder multiplying by L which indicates to the stroke of the cylinder multiplying by capital M which indicates the speed in RPM and K the number of the cylinder which is given in this problem four cylinder 
compressor complete with four cylinders. Uh, so uh, the second line, the line after that, we can uh, using the equation, uh, the same equation, but putting the displacement volume in two meter cube per minute in left hand side, and we just have uh, two unknowns, which is diameter or the bore of the cylinder and the stroke and there are a certain ratio given in this problem between the bore and stroke is equal 1 to 1.2 so we can replace the stroke with 1.2 the diameter and using the 1200 rpm and four number of cylinder so the equation will just have one unknown to be solved which is the diameter cube we can get after solving this equation we can get that the bore of this cylinder is equal 76 millimeter after transforming it from a uh, meter cube and then we can estimate the stroke in basis of the diameter of the bore by multiplying 1.2 by 76 millimeter to get that the stroke of this problem or this cylinder used inside this compressor is equal to 98 millimeters. After we have solving five problems based on the simple vapor compression cycle, we could see some problems which may be including liquid suction heat exchange by superheated the vapor out in, going out from the evaporator before entering the compressor and uh, the heat uh, to be gained to this vapor is transferred from the subcooled at high temperature at the outlet of the, comp uh, the condenser. Uh, by this heat exchange it may be increased the COP for certain number of refrigerants, not all the refrigerants. We can use this uh, heat exchange between liquid line and suction line. Also it has a limitation and the comparison must be performed before uh, estimate the number, the degree of superheated, the number of temperature uh, rising uh, in the entering, before entering the compressor, and also the number of temperature uh, limits in subcooling at the end of the condenser. It should be clear that the subcooling will increase this amount here, and then Point 0.4 and point 0.3 will be switched to the right hand side which will increase the cooling effect due to this subcooling which happened in the outlet of the condenser and this amount of heat on pH diagram will increase the COP uh, in its uh, upper part however the superheated here will maybe increase the work required by the compressor due to uh, converge the, due to the diversion of the constant S lines uh, in this direction. So the projection area from point 2 dash minus 1 dash is larger than the projected area from point 2 to point 1. So the work of the compressor will increase slightly due to this superheated, which is a must when we perform this subcooling between the two uh, suction line here and liquid line here. The amount of heat must be balanced <coughs> when using this liquid suction heat exchange and the effect on the COP must be studied before uh, must be studied carefully before uh, take uh, into account this superheat and subcooling during the design issue of the refrigeration cycle. This slide uh, finally concludes the effect of the subcooling and superheat uh, if compared uh, between point one, which must, which uh, we put it on the vapor saturation vapor line all of the time and point three which put it on the liquid 
lines, liquid saturation line all of the time. Once we reach this point three, as mentioned, as shown here, to the right we gain, we gain the cooling effect by this amount. And when switching this point one to the right hand, to the right direction, uh, we will lost and well, we have to pay a larger amount in a work of compressor. Then we have to compromise the gain from the subcooling due to the cooling effect increasing uh, by this delta H and the delta H increasing in the compressor and take the decision uh, if we need the superheat and subcooling liquid suction heat exchange to be uh, attached or the system must be equipped with this liquid suction heat exchanger or not and also the amount of superheating degree and subcooling degree to be considered according to the number of refrigerants uh, or the type of the refrigerant to be used in uh, the system under design. This slide also complete showing the effect of the liquid suction heat exchange and its presentation on pH diagram by switching or moving the saturation vapor line at entering the compressor by certain degree of superheating and to the right hand, to the right direction on pH diagram and also the effect of increasing of cooling effect by switching the point this point D from at the uh, exit of the condenser and the delay the exit of the condenser may be happen inside the condenser by condenser itself or maybe this subcooling will be happen outside the condenser inside the liquid suction heat exchanger as shown before and will show also in the next slide after this slide directly. Here we can see again the four main components of the cycle, of the vapor compression cycle, uh, and complete with the special uh, system components which the system may be equipped with to ensure the function of the vapor compression cycle. <clears throat> Especially, we will highlight here in this slide on the liquid suction heat exchange, which is located uh, just upstream to the exchanger heat between the liquid line before entering the expansion valve and the suction line after going out from the evaporator. This liquid suction heat exchange may be constructed by tube and tube heat exchanger or shell and tube, small shell and tube heat exchanger or more, may be constructed by soldered between this portion of liquid line before expansion device and the suction line just after the evaporator outlet connection as can be seen on this uh, moving cycle inside the four main components and the special components the system equipped with as shown in these figures. Also pH diagram are still here to present the effect of superheating and subcooling between the suction line before entering the compressor after going throughout the evaporator and the liquid line just before entering the evaporator and entering also the expansion device at high pressure and high temperature so that would, will allow the heat to be exchanged or transferred from the condensation temperature after this subcooling temperature to the lower temperature uh, however it's in vapor phase but at lower temperature uh, which is corresponds to the evaporating temperature and uh, some temperature will be rise in superheating of the suction line uh, to uh, reduce the temperature of the condensation temperature 
by certain degree of subcooling as shown on the attached pH diagram and as um, can be viewed inside the heat exchanger uh, the system this system is equipped with and many problems have showing uh, that during solving previous uh, problems in this lecture and also the problem the major problem of the suction liquid heat exchange uh, for co2 which we'll discuss in the next uh, some slides the residual slides in this lecture is dedicated to solve a problem of co2 which is r744 using liquid suction heat exchange as can be seen in the attached line diagram the problem heading is as a following use the r744 refrigerant property table in order to evaluate the following determine the work done on the compressor b determine the heat rejected to the hot water heater and the, that rejected to the space heater c determine the coefficient of performance of the hot water heater and the space heater recall that the cop is defined as the desired heat transfer divided by the work done on the compressor item d determine the coefficient of performance of the air conditioner notes that the, on the ph diagram that the internal heat exchange significantly increases the capacity of the air conditioner the line diagram shown uh, in this slide showing the compressor here in this side to increase the pressure of state 1 to state 2 the state 1 pressure is equal to state 6 which is 3.5 megapascal such the internal heat exchange is adiabatic from the internal outside and also does not affect the pressure so the pressure of state 1 is equal to state 2 and also the pressure of state 3 is equal to state 4 and equal to state 2 at this high pressure site the compressor compress the refrigerant r744 which is co2 from state 1 and temperature at pressure p1 3.5 megapascal and t1 30 degrees celsius adiabatically in adiabatic compression process to state 2 to gain pressure p2 13 megapascal and t2 160 degrees celsius then the superheated refrigerant is go through this water hot water tank to be cooled the gas to be cooled and the hot water will gain the heat at constant pressure process heat removal from the gas which is the co2 and the hot water will gain this amount of heat which has reduced the gas temperature from t2 160 degree celsius to 70 degree celsius which indicates here number t3a and pressure 3a which is equal is still constant during the second stage of heat removal in a space heater that will cool down also the co2 and add heat to this space so this cycle can be acting as a heat pump so the heat exchange liquid suction heat exchange may be useful with some certain of refrigerant during heat pump processes even for hot water or for hot air conditioning system then the temperature t3a is reduced of the gas from 70 degree to 45 degree celsius we will note after this slide that the gas is above the critical point so the temperature is pronounced here to be reduced from 160 to 70 to 45 degrees celsius in the gas cooling system rather than the condensation there is no condensation process but it is heat removal process and these gas cooler sections 
in different sections we can use this uh, cooling gas cooling to increase the hot water temperature and also to condition a certain space that is main concern for using co2 in some heat pump system uh, acting as a heat addition system to water or to space then after point three stage three we will go to this internal heat exchanger between the suction line of the compressor to reduce the temperature of point three from 45 by certain degree of subcooling or without subcooling by decreasing its temperature by gas cooling not subcooling due to there is no condensation process as will be shown on the next slide when presenting this line diagram on the pH diagram dedicated for CO2 after state 4 we will throttle adiabatically constant H process and adiabatically without heat removal or addition to state number 5 and then we will go to a through evaporator using constant pressure process such P5 equal P6 equal P1 such as mentioned uh, that the heat exchanger, liquid suction heat exchanger, doesn't exchange or slightly exchange the pressure which is neglected uh, if compared within the lower pressure limit of the cycle of this side starting from here, lower side, until this is lower side pressure and the higher side pressure which is located here um, uh, from the discharge of the compressor due to gas cooler suction and then the liquid suction heat exchanger until reach to this throttle device which may be used as an expansion device we will go now to the next slide to continue this problem as can be seen here we have uh, made the heat balance equation between these two sides of liquid suction heat exchange the heat added to the suction line increasing the temperature of 0.6 to 0.1 to reduce the temperature of the gas to be cooled from T3 to T4 so the gas comes here to enter this shell around this tube of suction line with blue however the gas to be cooled entered at state 3 around this tube to be cooled reduce its heat temperature and going to continue its journey to the rest of the cycle at state 4 however the suction which is outlet the suction line to be entered the compressor and which have uh, came from the evaporator have been uh, gain heat from this gas to be cooled at high temperature so q61 equal h1 minus h6 such h1 is higher than h6 and q uh, removed from the gas side equal q34 equal h4 minus h3 the equality must be happen with uh, respect to the sign convention of the thermodynamic processes uh, and taking also into consideration that H4 will equal H3 minus H1 minus H6. That can give us the equality and the status, the all states uh, of 0 0.1 and 0 0.6 and 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 during this heat balance equation will be performed additional to the heat balance to be performed on hot water tank and space heater as a gas cooler sections and also to estimate the Q evapor in the evaporator using the same equation for air conditioning purposes as required in this problem heading. Here in this slide we recall the pH diagram for carbon dioxide refrigerant with number R744 in two axes pressure in megapascal and enthalpy in kilojoule per kilogram the saturation line is shown in black and the iso temperature line is shown in blue and the volume specific volume 
uh, ISO lines is shown in purple and the constant uh, entropy line, ISO line, ISO S line is shown in light blue. In this slide, we have plotted all the cycle corners dedicated for the shown line diagrams which is shown on the left hand side in this slide and its presentation on pH diagram of CO2 is shown in this right hand side on this uh, slide. Uh, it should be clear the superheating performed between between 0.6 to 0.1 inside this liquid suction heat exchanger to be superheated by cooling the subcooled or the gas to be cooled from state 3 to state 4 by this delta H shown on this pH diagram before entering the throttle device and going through the evaporator and uh, superheated by certain degree of superheated can be estimated from here from this temperature line to this temperature ISO line we can get this temperature line equal to 30 degree as mentioned here T1 equal 30 degree and the evaporating temperature is 3.5 we using the line of 3.5 megapascal to get these points then we can estimate this temperature line which is zero degrees so the superheating is equal about 30 degrees Celsius from zero to 30 uh, from 0.6 to 0.1 however then we will go with uh, adiabatic compression to 0.2 which is dedicated here by temperature and the pressure so the isentropic efficiency have a certain value less than 100 percent and this line must not be parallel to the ISO efficiency line and we will locate uh, 0.2, 0.3, 0.3, 0.4 on the shown pressure 13 megapascal uh, of P2, P3, P4 are equally at line of 13 megapascal which is located here which is equal around uh, 130 bar very large amount so we should take into consideration that this line is there is no condensation happens here due to the this pressure is very high and higher than the critical point which is uh, intersection point between the vapor saturation line and vapor uh, liquid line so uh, the gas to be cooled from 0.2 to 0.3a uh, to lost heat to the hot water tank as shown here q hot then the second part is to the uh, are dedicated to space heating for uh, to reduce the gas uh, temperature from uh, t3a which is around uh, 72 degrees celsius as shown from this iso temperature line uh, this temperature was uh, around 160 one or 160 degrees celsius as shown on this iso temperature lines which is values are uh, shown here on these uh, blue lines then the temperature will be reduced in third part using the liquid suction heat exchanger the main issue of this problem by the heat to be superheated or to be gained to the superheated steam uh, in the suction line to reduce its temperature from T3 to T4, T3 is around 45 degrees Celsius, such as slide between 40 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees, and then 40, uh, number 4 is in on the line of 30 degrees Celsius. The heat exchange limits are corresponds here to the theory of heat transfer inside heat exchangers. You can review it by yourself. Then uh, from 0.4 to 0.5 we have to expand to reduce the pressure from 30 megapascal until reach 3.5 megapascal and you can get now all the cycle corners and its values of h1 equal around 480 h6 equal around 440 you have to check these values carefully uh, h2 is equal 
570H3A is around 400 in kilojoule per kilogram or these values of enthalpies H3 is equal around 310 H4 and H5 are equally and equal around uh, 270 you can uh, put all these values to make the heat balance on liquid suction heat exchanger to get the work of the compressor to get the heat added to the hot water uh, heat from which have uh, the gas uh, cooled with certain amount of temperature in gas phase starting with gas and end with gas and then going to gas cool second stage to air condition by heat addition in winter cycle air conditioning system we can use this amount of heat starting from here to here 0.3A23 and finally the necessary liquid suction heat exchange which may increase the delta H of the enthalpy here which will be gain in the air conditioning load which we are requested in the final item of this problem in the next slide we will show an enlarged pH diagram for this solving problem as can be seen here this is a pH diagram which I have discussed in the previous slides and finally we have get all the corners of the cycles and shown all the points and we can estimate all the enthalpies according to the two pressure limits which this cycle are working based taking into consideration the heat balance equation performed on the liquid suction heat exchanger in this uh, problem and also the work of compressor which is uh, listed as adiabatic compression not isentropic so it's not uh, equal uh, not parallel to the liquid uh, to the iso efficiency line we we will take this into our uh, calculation uh, consideration and then uh, the heat amount here and the heat amount here and the heat finally the heat to be removed from certain space for cooling thanks for watching and we will continue next lectures about the number lecture number seven will be dedicated for the different types of refrigerant and the usage of each type and the classification of the whole numbering system for this refrigerant site uh, later on lecture 8 and lecture uh, 9 lecture 8 will be dedicated for the residual innovative refrigeration cycle which have been discussed um, in the start of this uh, slide shows uh, then in lecture 9 we will go through uh, most common problem on this innovative vapor compression cycle in lecture 10 we will go through the gas uh, refrigeration and the vapor absorption cycle thanks for watching and we will uh, see you in the next lecture inshallah